Thanks to Softer for sponsoring today's video. What's up folks, I'm Dave Swift and I like spending my time on important things. I don't like spending my time on trivial tasks that are basically not getting me any closer to my goals. That's why I love AI combined with automation. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build an AI lead qualifier. Someone contacts your business, the AI can decide immediately, is this a good fit or not? Is this a scammer or is it a legit contact? Act, then it can take the appropriate action without bothering you at all. It can send them an email to let them know gently they're not a good fit, or it can DM you on Slack and say, hey, give these people a call. They're really a hot lead. You want to not miss out on this. Of course, I'm talking about a new feature from Softer because that team is on fire right now. They've just created workflows, which lets you do everything I just mentioned all in one platform. Now, I started covering Softer about a year and a half ago. At that point, you could just basically build an interface with Softer. You could create your own application, a CRM, a client portal, something for your business, that's what they specialize in, and then you'd store the data someplace else, maybe Airtable or something like that. Then they went ahead and added their very own database into the mix, so you didn't need a third party. And they even just recently beefed that up by adding AI agents into the database so that it could do things like draft emails on your behalf or just look at the information, do some internet research for you. Yeah, it was really, really a powerful tool. I made a whole video about it not that long ago. I'll link to all of my softer content in a playlist down below. But now they are back with what I think is the creme de la creme of features. This really ties their entire platform together. It's called Workflows. And it looks a lot like Zapier because it kind of is, but it's better than using Zapier because now you've just cut out one of the middlemen and you don't have to pay anything extra. It's built into your softer account. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this AI lead qualifier here. It's not that complex, but you can see there's kind of a lot to chew on here. What it's gonna do is, as someone fills out a form on my website, it's going to automatically score and rate that lead, and then if it's a hot lead, it will send them down one path, and if it's a cold lead, it will send them down another. We can get really, really specific here. There are a ton of powerful features inside of workflows, and the best part about it being local to software is that the data is right there. It's instantaneous. It's not like you have to wait for a zap to send and then process. And no, it's just all inside of the platform. Of course, you can send data out if you want to get it over to another platform. You know what? Let me just give you a tour of what workflows looks like, and then I'll show you more specifically how I built this one. Okay, so here is my software account. We now have three tabs. Apps, this is where you build your interface. Database, you connect your database up to an application to store all of the information. And then we have our third option, this is brand new. This is Workflows, the automation connector part of it. Now you might be wondering, how is Workflows different than AI agents, which I demonstrated in my last video about Softer? Well, essentially with AI agents, we can do a lot of the same things. I would say it's a little bit more confusing to see how it's all connected because we don't have the flow diagram. But the important part is if you wanted to send an email, send something to over Slack, basically get the information out of Softer, you had to use a third party tool like Meg, Zapier, N8N, one of those tools to connect up. And then it's just another point of failure and another expense. But now we have workflows and it's going to do so much on our behalf. When you're getting started with workflows, you can either start from scratch or you can use one of their pre-built templates. I don't think it's a bad idea to check out the templates and just get an idea for some of the things that you might be able to accomplish. Looking at templates can really help you understand all of the power that's hidden within a tool that you might not think of on your own. But as you get more confident with the platform and with automation in general, you'll probably want to start from scratch most of the time. It just cuts out the middleman and lets you get right to work. Now, every automation generally starts with a trigger. That's something that causes the automation to kick off. And Software Workflows is no different here. You can see the list of triggers on the screen 
screen, I would say the most common ones that I would use are probably softer databases. So that's what I'm using with my softer apps. When something happens in one of those databases, that's gonna kick off the workflow and cause a whole series of events to happen afterwards. Or it could be very simple. It could be one event as well. You can also use webhooks or have a schedule. So if something just happens at a certain time of day, that's a really common one. I use that as well. For now, I'm just gonna start off with softer databases and here are the available triggers within softer databases. A record is added, a record is deleted, it's updated or it meets certain conditions. I'm gonna go ahead and just choose a record added. So this could be someone filling out a form, it goes into your database and then it sets off a workflow. After we have our trigger, then we add in our actions. And we're just gonna take a look at the available actions here and then I'm gonna switch over to my pre-built workflow and we can talk in a little bit more nerdy terms about everything that's going on there. Now, when it comes to actions inside of workflows, there's really three different categories here. On the left, there are the third party integrations. Then we've got some softer actions up top, and then there are the built-in actions. And I'll go through each of these. You can see they're actually color-coded. So these are more like functional things like branching things off if they meet certain conditions, filtering things out, waiting, and just doing loops. So running things multiple times. And then these yellow actions are happening off of your site. So sending an email, doing an API call, scraping a web page, extracting information from a PDF, or running some custom code. Now you might look at the list of integrations over here and say, well, that's nothing compared to whatever your favorite automation platform is. And true, it is a newer platform. I'm sure they're gonna add more integrations as time goes by, but keep in mind, you can do so much these days with just API calls or running some custom code. Even if you're not a developer, because we have AI now, you can simply describe what you want to do. And generally the AI knocks it out of the park and writes the correct code to accomplish your goals. That's a topic of another video though, so make sure you get subscribed because I'm gonna be covering a lot more automation topics on this channel in the short term. Okay, so back over to my workflow here. I'm gonna get zoomed in so we can see this a little bit better. You can see this is basically just like an infinite canvas so I can get as tight in as I want or zoom out as far as necessary to see the entire workflow. But we start up at the top here with my trigger. So that is a record is added to my CRM. Now, once that happens, the AI is going to jump in and rate that lead. I can open this up here and show you the actual prompt that I'm using. Using. This action, by the way, is using Softer AI, which basically lets me use Claude or OpenAI on Softer's Dime. It's included with the price of my subscription, so I can choose any of the available models and whatever's appropriate. I tend to just kind of default to Sonnet these days because it's so good and very affordable uh, in terms of how many credits it's going to utilize. But let's open up the prompt here and you can really see what it is that I'm doing. So I've said, you are a lead qualification AI for a web development agency, you're going to perform a comprehensive analysis and return only the lead priority classification. So essentially, they're going to get all of the form data here, which I have used the little links into the form information. So for example, if I wanted to add in the website type, I would hit the at sign and or I could press the button right down here. And then I'm just going to type in website type. And it's going to show me the different areas of my form where that's included. And here is the information. Uh, basically, I want this label right here. I'll click on it and that's gonna provide the dynamic information to the AI so that every time it comes through, it's specific to the lead that was submitted. Okay, so all of my information is mapped up here and then I've got a very elaborate prompt. I used AI to help me arrange this and just kind of meet my specific goals. We're gonna go through a multiple step process. First, we're gonna validate that the company is legitimate. If you run a business, you know you get leads from people offering you very amazing things that never pan out and they're just, I'm not sure what the goal is here. If they're trying to scam you into sending them some money, I always just delete them. But you have that moment of what is this all about? It kind of just takes a little bit of brain power. And through AI, we don't even have to ever see those messages. So if it's not a legit business, we can just discard this. So that's the first thing that's going to happen is do a company validation. Then we're gonna assess their communication quality. Are they writing clearly and professionally? Do they have realistic expectations? We can go ahead and just have the AI score that for us. 
Then the AI is going to assess the project complexity, the budget, does it align with the complexity of the project, and the timeline, how fast do they expect it to be done? They're gonna use all of that information to start putting together the score. Now, if you're wondering, well, where is this form? I can show you what it looks like. It's right over here. And this is the same form I used in my last video where I was showing you the AI agents that live inside of software databases. So if you wanna know more about this form, it's a multi-step form, it uses conditional logic. Uh, it's one of the templates that comes with software. So go ahead and check out that other video. Again, I'll link to that in my playlist on software content down below. So it's gonna use all of those properties provided through the form and then use a formula here that I have provided to go ahead and score the lead. And if it hits a certain number of points, it's going to either be hot, warm, cold, or unqualified. Now, of course, there are also some override rules where if they're using an invalid domain, they have terrible communication, their budget is crazy, or their timeline is crazy, we will just go ahead and downgrade them the appropriate amount. So there is the prompt, and this is really doing a ton of the work for me in this one prompt. After this, it's going to take that quality score and then branch things out. So if it's hot, it's gonna go over here to the left, and if it's cold, it's going to go to the right. We can click on the branches action here and really see some of the conditions. So what I can do in branches is add as many branches as I want. So if I wanted to have a separate branch for each condition, I could do that. I could have hot, warm, cold, and unqualified. They could all be on their own branch, but that's just a lot for a video demo, so I didn't bother with it for this video. Instead, we've just got qualified and unqualified. And if I click on each one of these, I can see that this left branch over here, the hot branch, that's basically they are hot or warm. And then over to the right, I've got my cold branch that is cold or unqualified. From there, I'm gonna use AI to write an email that follows up with the lead automatically. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the OpenAI connection over here just to demonstrate it. You connect up your own OpenAI API key, choose the model that you'd like to use. They've got all of them listed here. So if I wanted to use GPT-5, I could do that. And then I've got another prompt here that supplies all of the information necessary to go ahead and write the appropriate style email to follow up. Yeah, I'll leave the prompt up here for a second. So if you wanna pause the screen to see exactly what I'm doing, feel free. And on the other side of the branch over here, I'm using a softer AI action to write an email to let the lead down politely that, hey, we're probably not a good lead. So here is the prompt. Basically, we're thanking them. We're gonna acknowledge that we understand what they're after and then just explain why we're not a good fit. Of course, we offer them some alternatives and we leave the door open to connect with them again in the future. You never wanna burn down bridges. The next action is to send the email that the AI just wrote. So you can connect up your Gmail here, you could send through Postmark, or you can just use their SMTP servers and you can even validate your own domain. I have not done that with this account here. It's using a softer domain, so it's just really for testing purposes. But basically, we go ahead and map our information to the various fields of the email and it'll send it on your behalf. So the to field, I'm gonna use the email field from the form, so whatever they sent it from, that's who I'm going to email. I'll enter in their project name, which is generated using my AI agents inside of my database to take the information and create a project name for it. And then the body is going to be that text that's generated via AI. Now you might notice that some of these actions have exclamation marks near them, and that's because I've not actually tested them out yet. So what I need to do is go over, I'm gonna choose the softer AI node over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the testing field. And if I hit test, it's going to use the previous demo data to actually test this email out. It's gonna write the body right here. So there we go, I've got my email. Now it says, hi Dave, because I filled out the form myself. Now what I can do is, use that information to go to the next action and connect it up. So I'll choose the at symbol down here. I'm gonna choose the right node, number nine. So these are all aligned with where they are in your flow. So that's number nine over here. I'll choose right, and there we go. I've got my result. That's gonna be filled in to the body of the email. Now you can also add in CCs, BCCs, and different reply to addresses if you'd like. I'm gonna leave that all blank for now, and we can go ahead and test this thing out. So for the email node, we get the ability to send a mock test, which is not actually going to send an email, or we can actually send a real email, which I'm gonna do because I think it's just gonna go off to me. 
And here it is, it hit my inbox almost instantly. You can see the subject line says web development for Dave Swift, and it reads very nicely. It's all formatted very well. Uh, yeah, I would not think this was AI generated if I received it at all. It says, thank you for reaching out. We appreciate your interest. After a thorough review, we've determined that the current scope and timeline for your project didn't align well with our specialized focus and work process. Now, one thing I might wanna do to just make that be a little bit more authentic is add in a delay, right? Because if someone fills out a form and I get this rejection letter almost instantly, I'm gonna know something's up. So I can easily add in a new action at any point, just click on a plus button. And here I'm gonna do a wait node. And let's go ahead and say, we're gonna wait for how about I don't know, 3.3 hours. That's a little bit random enough that no one would be suspect. Now we've got a nice little delay in there. Seems like we've really thought about the submission and wrote a custom reply back. Now, of course, we're gonna wanna get some data back into our application. So the actual humans that utilize the tool will know that that lead has been responded to, that they've been scored and everything is in its right place. So we can update a record here. This is just the softer databases node right here you choose the database you want to update, and then you can go ahead and just find the record ID from the form submission. So I'll do that for you here in real time, just so you understand how it works. The record added was in the very first step, so I'll click there, and I'm simply gonna look for the ID field here, which is going to be the record ID. That way we're adding data to the original form submission. We're not creating a brand new entry in our database. What information is going to be added? Well, we can choose that down here with our fields. So simply click fields. You'll see all of the columns inside of your database. So maybe I wanna go ahead and choose the lead status right here, and then I'll click on that. And for the value, I can go ahead and choose a variable. It's going to be score and rate lead, and the result is cold. Now I wanna show you some other things I think are really cool here. So let's say that the lead is hot, right? It's gonna come over here on the left side. We're gonna do the same steps. We're gonna write the email. We're gonna send the email. We'll update some information in our software database. But then if there are a hot lead with a high budget, which we can set over here in these branches, I'm gonna show you the results. So let's say they're a hot lead and they're gonna spend at least $15,000 with us. Well, then I want to message the owner directly on Slack and I find the owner here. I can have a custom message, pull in any of those very from the form submission or have anything the AI generated added into the message here. So you can get a message on Slack being like, hey, you need to pick up the phone. Let's call this person right away. You could do that for support or lead generation like we're talking about here. Really what I see this is, is reserving your human processing capacity for the highest value opportunities and everything else can be handled pretty well by AI. Of course, test all of this stuff out rigorously before you deploy it to your customers and check on the results so you make sure that things are actually being handled in a way that you approve of. But honestly, you have to do that with employees anyway, so not a whole lot changes. When you're sure that everything is good, you do need to test all of the actions, get all of those exclamation marks gone. But once you've done that, you can go ahead and flip the switch over here to publish your workflow, turn it on, and it will work autonomously for you even when you're sleeping. All of the runs will show up over here so you can actually see what is happening. And if you just wanna make a small modification, you can always duplicate them, try different variations. It's really a well thought out system, seems very mature for such a new product. So that's Softer Workflows. You can check it out for free with my link in the description. Thanks again to Softer for sponsoring today's video. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be checking the comments and try to get back to everybody. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want more information about software to grow your online business. Once again, I'm Dave Swift. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.